rock singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. The Justin Moore Podcast is sponsored by Bobcat. Visit them at bobcat.com. Hey, hey, check one, two. I think everything still works, JM. <laughs> I'm sure, man, everybody thought, like, I, I guess they're not going to do this anymore. Uh, but uh, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. Uh, we're still doing it. We're doing it. Um, yes. And we told you that we would. It was the longest April Fool's yeah, ever. We, we, April Fool's, we're back. Yeah, we told you we'd let you know if if we weren't going to do it. And we've had uh, a ton of people, I don't know, over the past, what, two, three, four months in meet and greets go, hey, I love your podcast. And, um, you know, whatever. We always listen. And we just had to take a little bit of a hiatus. We were uh, we were wore out. We took a break for the holidays, as we always do. I don't remember our last show uh do you uh i mean we did probably a, november last, december the first, uh, something like that well the first um episode of season five we did at the end of february actually oh, okay we did that there right before we um right before we got really cranked back up i think that was right before um our run up to detroit actually yeah it was right before we went to detroit uh to do the 10 man jam which was eventful in its yeah. In its, yeah. in its own right so um, but yeah been a couple of months but yeah we've seen a lot of people out on the road have been uh, asking about the podcast and obviously um everybody who's sent messages on instagram and twitter we've seen those i've tried to respond as much as i can and also um everyone who has text on the uh the text line which has been working great uh, as far as getting uh, information uh, to and from everybody out there in podcast land and in um, touring world that uh, come to shows, uh, the text line again is 501 200 4050. You can use hashtags on there for uh, meet and greets, for shows, for podcasts, anything you need to know, you can go through there and ask and find out, send questions, comments, all that stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, we've definitely been seeing all that. And um, yeah, just been, just like you said, just been busy, had a lot of stuff going on um, since last time we talked. So we thought we'd get on and. Um, Catch y'all up to speed where we've been, uh, what shows Justin's done. We've got a lot of cool stuff, actually, even in the past week and a half um, to talk about. Yeah. And we'll get to all that. Um, so I guess we could even start there, well, Just. I guess let, we hold even, on. Uh, let's let's start right here. Go ahead. So you guys know if you listen to this podcast or have, um, you know that we're not the greatest at communicating. Um, we probably should have communicated better that we were going to take a break. We didn't, that's my fault. Um, but so we stopped touring in usually like late October, early November. We take like three months off, like meaning JR and I, I mean, we text and we talk and, Might even see each other like down at the beach or something like that. But as far as the band and crew and drivers, like we don't even talk to each other for like three months. Um, And correct me if I'm wrong, Jr. But uh, and so our business is such that you kind of get into this, I don't know, mindset where. Everybody just kind of knows what we're doing, and you know, hey, we'll see you again here in February, or you know what I mean. We we'll leave each other in November. Hey, hug. Hey, great year, whatever. See you in February, and we don't even talk. Everybody goes home and uh, hangs with their family and all that kind of stuff. And and. I think at times maybe we forget that you guys don't understand that or know that because it's it really isn't normal. It's normal to us, but it, it it's not normal to you guys. So, um, so apologies for not uh, communicating better on that end. But uh, uh, but we definitely want to still keep doing this podcast, as I said. Um, and we've had a blast doing it, and we've said the entire time, as long as you guys are 
still watching and listening or watching and or uh, listening, we're going to continue to do it. Uh, again, we've been on the road for the past, I don't know, couple, three, four months or whatever, and people come up and uh, meet and greets. And even if we go eat lunch or whatever during the day, people come up and go, oh, I love y'all's podcast. And so thank you for that. We very much appreciate it. Um, but we are going to change it up this year just because we want to be more, um, uh, reliable, I guess, maybe a good word, um, doing it on a weekly basis is just incredibly difficult for, for us. Um, you know, when, when we started this, it was during COVID, we were both home all the time with literally nothing to do. Uh, so we did one a week and we kept doing that for, I guess, four seasons, if I'm not mistaken. Um, now that we're back on the road, my kids are all, all four of them now, um, back to playing sports and I coach all four of them, uh, and not only one sport, but two. Uh, and then when South starts playing football, it'll be three uh sports it's just really really tough and so what we're gonna do and we're excited about this and i hope you guys are cool with this we're gonna do one a month um and our goal is to have uh, a really awesome guest each month so even though you're getting um uh, instead of one a week you're gonna get one a month um our goal is to uh make them really really special and we know that we can handle the workload of one a month and deliver on that. The last thing we want to do is tell you, hey, we're going to give you one a week, and then you get one every other week or or one every third week or whatever. And and so when we're, we're looking at our schedules and seeing what's actually realistic, we thought, hey, we can do this. And so we don't know when it's coming out each each month, right? Uh, but yeah, we'll get, but we'll, we'll definitely get that, get that information a, we can, we'll get uh, that provided info, yeah. for you. But uh, I just want to get – before we start, I want you guys to know that first off, that that's kind of the direction we're going. Um, and I hope that's not disappointing to you guys because, we're, again, we're going to try to make each and every one of them uh, special. And we want you guys to know, like, all right, cool. I know I got this, you know, one time a month. And they're not going to just leave us for <laughs> however many days or weeks or months without telling us. Because as knuckleheadish as the two of us are, we can handle one a month. I mean, I don't know if you have anything to add to that or. No, um, I, I agree. Yeah. I'd say, and we'll get the info out there. You can go to the Instagram page for the Justin Moore podcast and uh, friend us on there, and um, we'll put po we'll post new stuff on there as soon as we know. Uh, and also the text line, um, if you're on that, we'll put announcements out that way. But the easiest way to make sure you get the to know exactly when the, each episode drops uh, is to click the notification button, whether it be on YouTube or on Apple Music or Spotify or wherever you listen to the podcast. Hit the like. Uh, subscribe and notification button and you'll get the you'll get a notification to your phone uh, or computer as soon as the episode actually comes out so uh, but yeah I think that's a I think that's something we can we can definitely um, definitely get done and keep everybody engaged definitely want to know everybody to know that we're definitely not stopping the podcast we've just been uh, pl planning to do some we've just been slammed um but yeah i think we do once a month and also if we uh if we have something come up and we get a chance we'll put some bonus ones out there oh too yeah to get you sure. as much content yeah. as you can yeah for sure uh, i know i've talked to a few people that said they've listened to some of the earlier seasons already on repeat because we've been on hiatus but uh, we're gonna have some more content coming out and um we'll lead up to it and talk about it in a minute but you know justin just had a new album come out too so we've been busy getting that released so hope everybody's uh, got that downloaded and bought. I know people have been sending me pictures of the signed vinyl they ordered and uh, things like that. So uh, very cool. And um, hope everybody downloads that and has that uh, has that rocking now. And we'll talk about that as the episode goes on. Um, 
I don't even know if we announced ourselves, but I'm JR the Handler. That's country music's finest Justin Cole Moore on the end of the Zoom machine over there today. Um, yeah, been on the road, been slammed. You've been baseball coaching and lunch packing and kids sick caring for and everything else. And um, I've got to see it, and we've talked about it, but we hadn't let everybody out there in the in uh, a podcast land uh, hear what's been going on. So we'll catch everybody up to speed today. Uh, we don't have a guest for you today, but uh, we'll have one next month. So uh, y'all stay tuned for info on that as it comes yeah, up. Yeah, and that's the other thing, uh, Jr. that um, – <clears throat> Doing once a month, I think, will help us plan for guests probably each episode. Yeah. Uh, and we can plan it yeah. like out in advance and uh, be able to, you know, uh, do a lot more of that, uh, I, I hope. Right. And, and promoting yeah. and, and you know, all those things. So. Right. And when we first started the podcast, it was easy to get guests because, like us, everybody was at yeah. home a lot during the yeah. pandemic. But now that we're back in uh, the real world, um, uh, it's a, it's been a little more difficult because everybody's schedules have booked up like ours have. So, but we have talked to some friends out on the road, uh, and and amongst ourselves, some cool people we thought that would be cool to have on, and uh, we're going to work on that and get that lined up. But yeah, we should have an, a guest episode, a guest each episode. But also, we're going to. Um, tell you some stories from the road and tell you where we're going to be and, and that kind of stuff. And any new information we have, we'll be able to, to drop it on you here. So make sure you, um, you like subscribe, hit the notification button, give us a review, uh, tell everybody you're glad to see us back or, Hey, you wish we'd have stayed gone, whichever, uh, <laughs> whichever you're feeling. But, uh, we are glad everybody uh, who did tune in today and this week and is listening to this podcast or watching the podcast on YouTube. Uh, thanks for sticking with us. And, uh, we appreciate your kind words and all the, words of encouragement and um, the, the shout outs and all that fun stuff when we see you yep. or when uh, you interact with us on social media. Uh, we'll get the first PSA out of the way today. Uh, JustinMoreMusic.com is Justin's website. JR The Handler for me. I'm at JR The Handler on Instagram and Twitter. That's the only place I'll ever you know respond to anybody on. Um, Justin Cole Moore, blue check mark, Instagram, Twitter, any of that stuff. There is no side accounts. There is no Justin trying to talk to you and his manager doesn't know about it or I'm trying to talk to you or we, we don't have a social media manager or a business person that's going to be reaching out on the side. So any kind of scamish, trickery type stuff that comes along and sounds fishy, just know it is absolutely fishy. There is no way we're going to reach out and side talk to you. Um, Justin and his wife are happily married as of mine, mine. There is no... Uh, we're not asking for money for anything. So just want everybody to be aware of that because no matter how many we talk, much we talk about it and we see our friends mention it on social media and you watch episodes of Dr. Phil about these crazy things and whatnot, it still seems to keep happening. So just want you guys to be safe out there with your finances and your personal information because these crooks do not care. They, 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 they have no heart. Uh, at all so uh, just be careful out there and know that that Justin and I will never reach out to you directly about um, anything like that just want to get that out there and, and y'all know the ones that that I t chit chat with on socials and uh, the ones that Cody responds to and Cody and I uh, along with Justin have access to the text line so that that's the best way to do it but just know there's no side accounts or no fishy stuff like that going on but I uh, want to get that out and uh, and early today yeah, and, and more specifically to just the uh you and I being happily married, I'm going to give you a scenario. Neither one of us are going to cheat on our wives. It's just not going to happen. Not going it's happen. just not going to happen. I'm just telling you, I don't, I don't give a shit what anybody out there on social media is saying this or that or, uh, you know, trying to scam this or scam that or so-and-so's telling you, this one's texting that one. It's not going to happen. Um, <laughs> there's so many reasons why, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a scenario. This is what happens when we get off stage. Every single night, and JR knows he can back me up, we go straight. I walk off. I do a, like a bow every night off stage. Hey, uh, if you've seen us play, I say, hey, uh, the last thing I do is I'm from Poe in Arkansas. My name's Justin Moore. We'll see you next time or next trip or whatever. 
And I walked straight to JR in about five feet. And typically, Nathan, our assistant tour manager, he hands me a towel. I'm going to tell you exactly what happens. I walk off doing this. I, I grab my spit cup and my drink cup off the drum riser. Walk off. Hey, he hands me a towel. We walk from there straight to the bus. It usually takes us 10 seconds to do that. And JR and I immediately change into this kind of stuff. And like this kind of stuff. I don't know if y'all can see this. And comfortable. And we, yeah, we get comfortable. And we get ready to, JR and I, because we're on a bus together. And it's usually just us and a driver or two drivers. And we play NBA 2K on PS5. And for, yep. I don't know, an hour, two hours, whatever. And then we go to bed. That's it. That's all that's happening. So yep. it's put, never put anything music. you hear outside of that is not happening. <laughs> like, You're right. Yeah, we put it on channel 808, direct TV, classic country channel on one TV, so we can listen to that. We play PS5. Yeah, so I, I usually have what, JR? One drink on stage. If I'm feeling crazy, it's a drink and a half. I mean, maybe I don't know. That's it. Yeah, we we don't. It, we, yeah, it used to it be down. like a whole different thing, but that's it. Like I, a lot of times, yep. I don't even drink my entire. A lot of times, it's a half a drink on stuff. Like it, that's just, we just yeah. we're not in that world. <laughs> like I'm 39. Right. Jr's 42, three, whatever. Three. Um, I'm just telling you, it's just. We don't even have the damn energy. So, but uh, but yeah. but, so but every so and the only reason I'm saying this, it's not like you normal people that are. And I don't. That sounds bad. It's not you people that know us and are fan. But it's every time you again, like Jr. said, you watch Doctor Phil, or we get these crazy ass messages on Facebook or Twitter or I don't know whatever. And it, yeah, I mean, it some, is Instagram nuts. Or like Justin's, yeah, some Justin's. Uh, uh, I'm mad at him because he's uh, he's causing my daughter to get a divorce with her husband because he keeps texting her, and I mean, it's just it's insanity. Like it's insane. It's insanity. It's insane. I mean, if you want to see, and I'm not the, even that famous. Here, but, like, can you imagine? Now, if you want to see, like. Like the Brad Pitts of the world, or the Luke Bryans, or the oh, like, God. it's got to be just, it's crazy. Well, just like you can YouTube, go on YouTube when you're done watching this today, and go YouTube Doctor Phil post. Oh my gosh, ridiculous uh, girlfriend yeah, or whatever. Ridiculous. And this this lady, you know, seventy year old lady, believes she's been texting with Post Malone for and two Post years. Post Malone's and like twenty eight, and Look, giving away posty. all her her posty. money. Her, yeah, Posty, <laughs> give away all her money, her mortgage, her house, everything. Um, and I know these scammers are out there, and they try to get you. So we just want you to be safe and not get scammed. Um, you know, people try to scam us. I mean, it's, it's we that people make jokes about the car uh, warranty thing, but all those scamming calls and emails and fishy stuff. Um, there's no Saudi Arabian prince trying to send you a million dollars if you send him two thousand. No, it's it's just not going to happen. And, the, and, so, and while we, same this as is, Justin's not dating yeah, go ahead. someone's sixty-five year old roommate in Cincinnati. It's just not happening. There's no. There's no. That's just not happening. So we just want everybody to be safe and uh, not get caught up in that stuff. Because I see a lot of Justin's peers, friends of ours in the in the music community, um, you know, posting stuff about people getting scammed and. Trying to remind everyone, blue check mark. That's the only account I. Have. I mean, I watch Ricky Medlock from Skinnerd have to deal with it all the time, and I watch him get just furious with people making fake accounts and trying to talk to people on his behalf. And I feel the same way. And I saw Hauser, Randy Hauser, put one up the other day. It's just and David Lee Murphy. I mean, it just and these people will say anything to try to scam you. And if you're, and you know, I feel I feel like uh, this may be a part of mine and your legacy because I, we we've talked about this off. for three years now or four years or whatever it's been. I didn't even know it and was I really a thing like, before. It never gets any better, but 
if we mm-hmm. if we help some like one person by talking about this, and I know this is probably boring to the people who are like, yeah, obviously, like why would I do that? But I'm telling you, there are people out here who do this like daily. But if we save one person their life savings, or yep. their relationship, or whatever, I, maybe we've done our job. Health and well-being, but, yeah. And and the other thing, this is the other thing uh, we've talked about a, a hundred times on here. And after this, we'll move on and have a fun show. But um, so we're playing in Sacramento the other night to twenty. 19,500 people, whatever it is. It's a lot of people. And it was a great show, by the way. It was Country in the Park, uh, KNCI, which is a great station in uh, Sacramento, California. They put this event on. It was me and uh, Chris Young and Maddie and Tay and Breland. Breland and... uh, and it was a it was Corey a number of people. The show. And so I walk on stage and I mean there are nothing short of five, six people in like the front couple of rows holding up signs the entire time. The entire hour and twenty minute show and pointing and I would acknowledge them and go, oh, that's awesome. Yeah, awesome. Or I'd go, I'll sign, I'll sign it later. I'll sign it before I leave or whatever. You know, we sign this. I, or there was one in particular, and, and I love you guys for this, And I, if you're listening. Uh, it was, hey, our first date was your concert 15 years ago, and now we're married and, or something like that. And I'm, I love that. It's, that's incredible. But I acknowledged her probably 60 times in the matter of the first three songs. And then she just keeps holding it up and pointing at it. Keeps holding it up and pointing. And I'm, that is so distracting to me. <laughs> like it, it's, it's so incredibly distracting. Then I'd go out to the catwalk. There was a guy at the end of the catwalk on the left side. The catwalk was like a a T. So you go out and you go right or left at the end of it. This guy would be like, with he'd take his hat off and he'd go, and I'd go, I'll get to you later. I'll get to, and then he just like, ah, ah. And then the next time I'd come over, it was his belt. Next time it was his shirt. Next time it was a sign. And I'm like, I'll get to you. Oh. I'm like, Guys, what you have to understand, I love each and every one of you, and I appreciate all you. But there are also, like, there were 19,500 people there. You are just as important as anybody else out there, but anybody else out there is just as important as you also. So they don't deserve me instead of singing a note into my microphone, signing this or talking to you or I, and that I, I hope you, that doesn't sound did that, I hope that get, doesn't sound never hateful, get any songs played. But like it is so incredibly distracting when you're pl- trying to play a show because I mean, the thing is like when you're especially the lead singer, like I'm trying to play an instrument correctly. I'm trying to sing on key. I'm trying to speak intelligently and articulately. And then and then it's I mean it's just it's too much like and what i mean, does that sound mean i don't mean that no. in a mean way but no, we've well, talked about it i'm like as... I, plus if i tell you like i'll get it i'll get it like just take your sign down and enjoy the show just watch this yeah because just, just watch the freaking show like yeah you're oh! you're distracting everybody behind you like, that no one behind you can it drives see me crazy yeah you're you're, and you know, and if you took time, and I love to, you to do for that, doing the, those and making those signs. But once I acknowledge, my point is, once I acknowledge you 
and you know that I've seen it, then knock it off. And I don't, JR can tell you, I don't forget. Like, I'll come back to you, or I'll tell him, hey, I got to sign this, or I got to sign that, or I got to sign this, or I got to sign that. And while we're on that subject, the other thing is, I'm going to give picks out to every child I see before any adult. Little girls first, then little boys, and then I'll start giving them out. But, like, the 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 people that try to grab them out of kids' hands, knock it off. Stop. Like, come on now. Like, yeah. I don't know. I, I Now I feel like I'm... I'm reprimanding people i i just want you well, to know because i want you to have to give everybody I the just, best concert experience yeah i just want you to have, have the best experience you can have and if you got to hold a sign up over your head for two hours like this like that's got to be exhausting plus the people behind you ain't happy about it like once do it until i acknowledge it and i promise you i will early then put it down enjoy the show and I'll sign it at the end of the show. I don't sign anything during the middle of the show. Ever. Don't do it. Have you ever seen me do it? I no, don't do it. Got, it. Like I said, if you if you did that, you would never get to play the show. That's like I get on our guests sometimes, our friends backstage. They want to come on the bus 10 minutes before you're supposed to start. And I'm like, guys, we have to go play the show. We cannot sit yeah. here and bullshit with y'all all night because we've got, we've got a show to play. Oh, I mean, you got to get your head right, man. Out, chit like, chat. it's just... It is yeah. what it is. And, and I hope I don't sound grouchy. Uh, or I, I just, it, I feel like we've talked about this a hundred times and it never does any good. But, um, no. Well, but hopefully everybody will get anyway. the message. And like you said, if we help a few people, and maybe everybody will spread the word. I know people have sent me pictures of fake accounts and saying, yeah, we know. We heard on the podcast. Watch out. So, yeah, if there's if a weird name with numbers and if it's my name and a picture of Justin on it, or it's just crazy. So just be careful out there, everybody. Um, we were talking – We had, our last episode came out February 20th, which uh, I was just looking back at my notes, what, what we did right after that. That, that day, actually, we had a – the day the episode came out, we had a private show down in Orlando, uh, one of our first shows of the year, which was a lot of fun. I'm trying to think what that uh, was. And then a few days later, you and I went to D- – do what, buddy? I said, I'm trying to think what that was. It was a private show we did in Orlando out in the um, – um, was an outdoor show. They had a cool fireworks show afterwards. Oh, um, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that fireworks show was awesome. Yeah, it was pretty sick. Um, and then we left. You and I left. Everybody else went home. You and I left and went straight to Detroit uh, to do an acoustic <laughs> thing, um, which Roger and Steph met us up there, and we did the uh, Tin Man Jam. It was very interesting. Been, they've been doing yeah. that for years um, in Detroit. And we had Shane Prophet was there. Breland, who we just talked about, was there. Our tour mate, uh, uh, Priscilla Block, was there. You played on the show. There were two rounds. That was your round. And also uh, the <laughs> the incomparable Clay Walker was on that show it as well. It was very you interesting. You better drive him smooth. You better drive him smooth, Mother Trucker. That's all I know. Uh, but that was a very interesting show. And then on the second round was Lady A – Jelly Roll, Midland, and, God, and Midland didn't get to the make it here. because they yeah Midland had their flight messed up troubles or yeah the coming from the west and then Jelly Roll didn't make it either for whatever reason oh wow uh, and I can't remember the other two yeah he he didn't make it that day either but Lady A and there were two younger artists which I apologize for not having the names written down here um but so that was the second round but anyway it it was a fun show that's a beautiful the Fox Theater in Detroit beautiful. Yeah, um, it I'm is. just looking through my pictures here. I got I got a video of us watching um, Tracy Lawrence at 4 a.m. after that video, so I'm sure I was um, enjoying some some country on the long ride home that day. Um, and then after that, but that was that was a cool event. Then we did some shows on the road, um, North Carolina, Roanoke, Virginia. Um, then we had a few weeks off the road. You did. 
you and the boys went to Nashville and did a thing for CRS. Then you went and you were the, uh, I don't know if you've talked about this, you could briefly mention how this experience was. I know you said it was super cool, but you were the grand marshal of the world's shortest St. Patrick's Day parade in Hot Springs, Arkansas uh, yeah. in March. Is that right? Yeah. Um, so I live and grew up in, I don't know, a half hour from Hot Springs, 35 minutes, something like that. And, um, yeah, there you go. Um, and so I'm, but I moved to Nashville 21 years ago. And I think this was the 20th year of this, if I'm not mistaken. So I was not familiar with this or how big it had become here, you know, um, locally, but it's the world's shortest parade in the Guinness Book of World Records. I think it's like 90 feet or something. I, I don't know. Whatever the – Oh, wow. Yeah, it's super short. I mean, it takes a while when you're doing the whole thing because there's thousands of people. and It's become a big deal is the point. And I didn't know how right. big a deal it had become, and I had never gone. Uh, but I've been hearing for the last few years – man y'all gotta take the kids it's awesome they would love it and i'm like oh okay you know anything you do or anything i think around you where you live or grew up or whatever that people rave about you go oh yeah okay and then but people outside of that region go yeah that's a huge deal i want to go and take you know you know what i mean and yeah and so I was asked to be the Grand Marshal this year, and just for reference, last year was the head football coach of the Razorbacks, and um, golly, I mean, they have national uh, celebrities and bands, and like last year, I think it was, um, oh golly, Danny Trejo, uh, you know, well, and I was just looking through the pictures here. It, uh, Joey had sent a picture, uh, some pictures that day, and he and Bethany and Shooter McGavin. Yeah, so this year uh, it was like me. Can't remember his name. Uh, Shooter McGavin, which yeah, and I I don't know his real name, so, but anybody he's been in a bunch of movies. Anybody our age knows know uh, from Happy Gilmore, Shooter McGavin. Yeah, um, and he was super cool. Uh, like last year, Cheech and Chong were there. Um, right. The they have big bands like uh, the right. Village People. But who was this year? They, I know you know all these I, people. I saw Shooter, but also I saw a, a picture Joey sent you and Joey and the Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders. Yeah, all the Cowboys cheerleaders were there, and the and the ladies. I don't watch this, but my wife and my girls do, and I'm sure a lot of ladies watching or hearing this maybe do but the cheerleader what is it cheerleaders training camp or something that the yeah they've had a show for years yeah, about how it's to be a big a, becoming the Dallas Cowboys and, cheerleader uh like so all the ladies that were running that are on that show they were here and if that makes any sense I, I don't maybe it don't I, I don't know yeah I don't know what the hell I'm talking about because I don't watch it but um, right but my, I know my daughter and my wife are like, she just, she just came up and asked you for a picture. I'm like, yeah, who was that? And they're like, oh, she's the, you know, the Cowboys trainer or something, I, whatever it is. Right. I don't know. I don't know how you describe it, but, um, but yeah, it, it, point is, it's it's become a big deal around here, and so that was, it was a lot of fun, man. It was it was cool. So Kate and I rode in the back of a. I think it was a 60s model uh, Thunderbird um, convertible and threw out beads, almost like Mardi Gras. You're throwing out beads. Yeah. Uh, so we threw out like thousands of beads. And uh, it was fun, man. It was a good time. It was it was cool. That's awesome. So, Yeah, I hate I missed that. But, yeah, I know you, Joey, y'all said it actually was a lot more fun and, and really cool event. Uh, <laughs> There. So if y'all are in the area next yeah, year, it was a lot of fun. Uh, and don't have a big, yeah, don't have big St. Patty's Day plans, and you're in the uh, Central Arkansas area. Maybe head over to Hot Springs, and um, I don't know. Maybe Justin will come back yeah. and just to hang out next year. Um, 
But we did after you did that. We went on the road the next week. Did some shows in Kansas and Illinois. Uh, saw some of our uh, friends from Bobcat came out to a few of the shows. Want to give a shout out to all our fine sponsors out there. Thanks for helping uh, make this podcast a reality. Uh, Bobcat being one of the main sponsors. Want to always give a shout out to them. Uh, while I'm saying that, I'm staring at this huge box of batteries and accessories <laughs> from Batteries Plus. Yeah, so I want to give a you. shout out to Batteries Plus. I don't think I have to yeah. buy batteries for like seven years. Right. Yeah. And I've got, and like I said, I text you and Cody, I got the C and D. I got a huge box of C and D batteries. So I'll bring some of those to you when I, when I can next time. But I, I want to say there's some really cool products that Battery Plus batteries plus provides and um, i know eddie our driver and i were talking about it the other day there's this jump start little box that's about twice as big as your phone but will jump off a diesel truck so uh, and and the generator on the bus so check uh check batteries plus out and um, if you need anything like that order it from them i'm sure the prices are as good as you can get and i know the the quality is up to par um so y'all check them out but had a good time on the road um with our friends from bobcat on the salina kansas and the duquan illinois show uh, then I actually was in town, met some some uh, two guys, which um, you haven't met yet, Just, but I'm sure we will on the road sometime. Um, I came and helped at a show at the Floribama with uh, the, the duo Neon Union, um, and they were really good singers, had some cool songs. Uh, they were doing a radio thing here, um, so got to see them that night. Uh, uh, one was a producer and one was a singer. You two guys ought to work together now. They're a, a duo, so uh, y'all check them out. But really nice guys, and, um, and uh, it was good to see them. Then we were off because we kind of started this year, kind of start and stop. We did a couple shows and we had a little break and a couple shows and a little break. Um, so we were off the first week or two of April. But when we got back out on the road, um, had some pretty cool shows. We went to did a private show in Texas, which was cool. It was at a big uh, concrete manufacturing plant. Uh, it was really top notch thing they did for all their employees there unbelievable and uh got to see our good friend randy hauser was there. i'm listening keep talking uh, i'm gonna shut these shades yeah uh our good buddy randy hauser was there and if anybody hasn't seen randy hauser live um he is he is better than i mean he's always been one of my favorites but he is better than ever his songs and his singing is just and his band he's got put together now is just smoking um governor abbott was there the governor of texas um several other really cool people we got to meet that night um but that was fun but then the we had to take a flight that night, actually, to Florida because um, we had to go down and play Tortuga Fest uh, in Fort Lauderdale, um, Florida, on that Sunday, the 16th of April, which was really cool. Um, we headlined, uh, closed one of the stages. Kenny Chesney closed the other stage. Uh, we got lucky and didn't have any weather mm. issues that day. Um, it was actually a really good day, and then weather turned on us about as soon as we got done. So I know Kenny played some and then got shut down, and yeah, so, they evacuated yeah. everybody. Yeah, we, we, we but, were thinking we were going to get, like, rained out or lightning out or whatever. and So we played right before Kenny and got through our whole set and – I'm telling Jr. Man, we gotta go. We gotta go. I want to go see Chesney. He's like, I don't think he's gonna get to play. So they go on stage and play what? We're standing outside the bus on the yeah, beach. They played for about it's half an hour. And lightning. I didn't think they played that long, but they may have. But but yeah, that man, that's yeah, a tough got deal a for. Few in and then... I hate that for those fans, man. Because Chesney, oh, yeah. but uh, they... puts on a great show. I mean, he's a great. And Great they actually, entertainer. Yeah, and actually, after we left, they actually opened it back up and let people back in, and he played another 45 Oh, really? Okay. Set at, at like midnight yeah, that see, night. we left when they pulled them off stage. We left, so. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but that was a really cool experience, getting to go to Tortuga and play that festival. Uh, hadn't, that's the first time we've gotten to play that actual festival, so that was really cool. Shout out Live Nation for having <clears> us. Appreciate y'all. Yeah. Uh, then that week, we were back to business as usual, back on the um, You, Me, and Whiskey tour with Priscilla uh, and Jake McVie. We did La Crosse, Wisconsin, Dubuque, Iowa, and Coralville, Iowa. Really cool um, shows, great crowds, really fun to, to see everybody out there. And Justin mentioned earlier, we have started our uh, meet and greets back up. You can uh, text the text line, 501-200-4050, to get information. Um, that's the way we're, we're, we're going to, to – do it for now we'll have it on the website full-time at some point but that's the way to get the information for those now 
Uh, so, so do that if you want to see if there's meet and greet options available at any of the upcoming shows we have on our calendar uh, this year. Um, then we got home. Um, well, before we get to that, I'll say this because I, I was going through my pictures. I have a ton of crawfish pictures. I guess this mm. was from um, Easter. Man, that sounds good. I did, like right now. Because I did crush a bunch of crawfish when I went back to Louisiana for Easter. Um, and then got home and did crawfish boils. Um, and actually, if I know some people have asked, um, what's the, the other podcast I've been doing, Tig's Bits. Uh, that's some friends of mine. Uh, my friend Chad Blasey from, from – um, the Destin area and uh, my friend Tig Brantley from Baton Rouge. We just talk about just everyday stuff, this and that. Uh, and we actually had a good long episode on crawfish boils, the proper way and the do's and don'ts. So y'all check that out if you get a chance. Don't give my pour buddies, uh, seasoning on them once you pull them out. That does exactly absolutely right. no good. That's one of the biggest things we said. You, like, we call it dusting. It's like, no, you don't dust All them. that you does is burn your right lips. Season. It does no you good a bunch whatsoever. Of mess. You gotta, no, use a whole roll of paper towels. It's, you know, same as if you, you know, we had several on there. You can check that out. But same as if you cook them too long and you can't get them out of the shell. It's like, why did you ruin them? Just they're, it's, if they're done right, they're so easy. Right. You don't need all that. Uh, but check that out. That, that TigsBits.com. You can go to TigsBits on podcast, uh, wherever you get your podcast, and check that out. Uh, then going through my pictures here, we actually – Trying to think of the time. I actually passed my time because when we did this, because we did this fast, it was actually that week, the 12th, we did this. I want to give a shout out to everybody who helped um, help put on and execute the Too Little Rock with Love Tornado Relief Benefit concert we did on April 12th at the Hall in Little Rock. A uh, good friend, uh, Josh Ballou, who owns the Hall, Marathon Music Works in Nashville, several other clubs. Uh, reached out and uh, wanted to do something for the people there, specifically in Little Rock after the tornadoes uh, ravaged that area the week before. Uh, so we put something together and had a real good turnout. Uh, we had Colin Ray, Arkansas legend, yeah. um, show up and help us on the show. Matt Stell, uh, the long, tall Arkansan, uh, songwriting extraordinaire Adam Hambrick uh, show up to help. Heath Sanders, Ar Arkansas's own. Tyler Kinch, up-and-coming uh, young really good country artist from arkansas um and then some and a bunch of friends from radio and television there in arkansas uh, governor sanders and her husband brian showed up uh and, and for the show it was just a really good night raised over one hundred twenty thousand dollars for the tornado benef uh, tornado victims there in the little rock area that one night uh so just wanted to mention that before we went any farther shout out to everybody who helped put that on um and and you can go find links if you still want to help um, to the cause, um, I know when we were there for the golf tournament, uh, the St. Jude golf tournament we did a few weeks ago, I still noticed coming over from Chennault back, I mean, just huge to uh, apartment complexes just devastated. And, yeah, it's, it was you know, crazy. Stuff blown man. over and trees. It really over. was. It was, yeah, it, was it was amazing that only one person lost their life in Little Rock. When you see the I know, damage. I saw that. Yeah, when I saw that apartment complex, I was like, man, that is a miracle no one yeah, else got it was, hurt. It I mean, was whole, nuts, man. One first, whole second floor was gone. I mean, in, in, but, uh, by yeah, the way, one shout person out. is too many. Yeah. I don't mean Absolutely. that, but it was, uh, it was. I mean, that was, it was crazy. I mean, yeah. I remember well, being in my office to... right here watching. So I have a TV right over here for those kind of right behind the camera that I'm pointing at right now. And um, I was sitting here watching it live going, I mean, hundreds of people are going to lose their lives. Like, this is bad, bad. You know, I've, yeah. I usually I'm like, like our wives are both from Louisiana and with hurricanes are like, oh, it's nothing, hey, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, oh, it ain't no big oh, deal. Yeah. I'm kind of that way with tornadoes. I'm like, oh, hell, that'll go up here, down there, away from people or you know i can tell usually oh if it's taking that path it's taking that path you know a thousand times before and this is where it's going to go and it'll go here and do this and uh fizzle out or but i'm i was sitting here going this ain't good like this is not good <laughs> yeah I, i'm i mean you're what i was watching it on local tv 
go into downtown Little Rock, like literally downtown, and I'm like, good grief, man. But uh, fortunately, um, you know, a, a bunch of lives were spared that you wouldn't have thought would have been, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it was, when, like I said, we saw some of it, you know, a month later, and it was just awful. So uh, thanks to everybody, all our artist friends and all of the um, – um, radio stations and, and, and the venue there at the hall, their staff and everybody for helping putting on a great event. Um, all the sponsors, Tito's, Simmons Bank, Dillard's, um, everybody who came on to help us out with that. Um, we After we did that, yeah, we went to... Uh, we did another Wisconsin tornado had some benefit after that. <laughs> oh, yeah, actually we did that Thursday ne- before we left, next left week, town. Yeah. So we've done... Uh, uh, we, uh, charity stuff for like three or four weeks straight which is yeah we did it's a good thing I, it's not a bad thing but like we're not accustomed to playing midweek shows uh you know a month straight if you will but right. anyway i didn't mean to interrupt you go ahead no 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 but yeah i'm glad you reminded me of that yeah we actually did you, you popped in and did a thing um that thursday night as well um which uh which helped a lot. We got, uh, you know, there was a, there was a great crowd there for that, that night. I hate we had to leave in such a hurry, but we had a long ways to go to get to Wisconsin. Um, and then after we did that run, um, at one of the cooler events that I've been a part of in a while, um, I, I don't even know where to start on this. I'm going to dig up the lineup just so I, I can, I can read it off. But we went to Huntsville, Alabama at the Van Braun Center. Oh, which wow. Is, it's yeah. A, been around forever a uh, great venue there in huntsville the rocket city but we did the the still playing possum uh music and memories of george jones event um there on april 25th um just you not the band guys just you got up and played with the staff band uh the house band they had for that night which uh was just all-star players consisting of my buddy eddie dunlap opry eddie it was good to see him uh but just an unbelievable lineup uh, that night. I'll, I'll go down some of the list here, and we can we can talk about some. Yeah, of them. this was, was one of those show. events that. Um, I mean, we didn't get paid for this, but if we did, like Jr. and I could do this sixty times a year and call it a year. Like this is oh, right up our alley. Uh, oh, it was great. A, a thing honoring George Jones. We've also done in the past. Charlie Daniels, um, Kenny Rogers, Kenny Rogers um, uh, maybe another one or two, and then now several of those, uh, yeah. George Jones. Like this is like our bread and butter out right here. But go ahead and uh, name yeah, the artist. I I, 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 yeah, well, the the MC for the event was Paula Dean, which she's a hoot. But she, she's she, character. I, I don't know if she knew who everybody was there that night. I don't she, know if she, she knew was who a hoot. she was. Uh, You're right, she but was, I love her to she death. Was, she I mean, a, and and, yeah. and you know, whatever. I I know the controversy and all that, but I mean, she's a character. She reminds me of like my grandma oh, yeah. or something. Right. You know? Well, and she's well. We have to say it was put on by Nancy Jones, George's right. widow, and um, I'm uh, their friends, and obviously everybody was friends with George and Nancy. So uh, that's the that, there's the connection there. But she she was the host. Um, then the first act to come on was John Barry, Anita Cochran, Heath. Well, Wright, the very Hearn, first and Billy was Yates. Jamie. Remember how he started the show? But you know, this well, whole did, world is that. full of singers. Just they did that before. Oh, did they that. really? Then Paula came. They did. Oh, they did sorry. no show Jones first. I was thinking they opened. Yep, they did okay, no show I'm Jones sorry. first, and then Paula came back on and did her welcome announce remarks, and then Jamie Johnson did "Who's Going to Fill Their Shoes." Yeah. Um. Then Michael Ray, Jeannie Freaky, Dylan Carmichael, and Tracy Bird. Uh, I don't need your rocking chair. Um. And I'll just go down the list. Tim Watson. Which I I didn't wasn't aware of Tim until that night, but met him. He's from Alabama, but played fiddle in Tammy's band and played fiddle with George for years and years. He was a character. Uh, the Isaacs, which is a family vocal group that has been around for a while through different family members, but my God, they are still yeah. Good. I was you probably were because you're better at this than me. I was not familiar with them. They were phenomenal, like oh, yeah. phenomenal, like. I was yep. going, wow, man. I forget what they did, but 
I was blown away. And I kind of felt bad about myself not having any clue who they were but yeah, prior to They that. did right, left hand. They did oh, right, yeah, left hand. Oh, yeah, it was hand. so good, man. Yeah, they were amazing. So, y'all, yeah, the Isaacs, yeah, they're a, they're a vo- family vocal group in the Christian music world and gospel singing world and have, have had different incarnations through family members over the years. But, man, yeah, they are amazing. Uh, I know, I'm aware because I know they do a lot of shows with Jimmy Fortune, who I'm a big fan of, and, and, and that those kind of acts. Um, but, yeah, they were they were amazing. Our, our buddy Dylan Carmichael, he fit in there like a hair in a glove, uh, a hair in a biscuit. He just he, He's just as good as they get. Uh, Travis Tritt, I mean, TT, Bro. what do you say, you know? Um, Tanya Tucker, Aaron Lewis, Sarah Helberg, Sarah Evans, Tracy Bird, which got to say this, you know, we talked about it a little bit. Never really been around Tracy Bird We've much. We've got to get in, him on uh, this in, podcast. In our career. Yes, but Tracy Bird is about as good as they get. And He's cool, cool as a smooth, cucumber, man. Yeah, yeah. And, and everything he says and singing and playing is just and he looked and stuff. He was just like a star. Did he not? Star. Like, Tr- he's walking yeah, around absolutely. backstage and he goes, hey, Justin. And I'm like, that's Tracy yeah. Bird, man. God. Yeah, and I'm Bird. like, golly, he looks like a star. I mean, he just looks yeah. like a star. He was. He looked like a dude, Texas I, I wanna, cowboy. I want to wear his out. He had black Wranglers, a tan suede pearl snap, tan like yep. cowhide boots, and I forget the color of his hat. May have been black. I get a black hat, black felt. And I was like, that is a great outfit. Like he looks. Yeah. Like a stud right yeah. now, man. And yeah, Tracy so, yeah. Bird definitely, definitely. We got to get uh, to know him a little better. Yeah, great first time being around Tracy yeah, Bird. I was awesome. talking to Tracy back, our Tracy, Tracy Lawrence backstage, and Tracy Bird was doing his interview, and I was just listening to him do his interview. It was like, man, this it's guy perfect. has got it together. Yeah, yeah he just nailed yeah, it. I, I mean, it. he kind of awesome. he, he was saying, yeah, Tracy wants to do everything. Hell, I don't want to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was just, it was hilarious. Uh, but so that was cool getting to see Bird. Then you had Trace Atkins and the Isaacs. Uh, and then we had JM come up and do White Lightning. That was uh, that was cool. Had a little uh, hitch, which you won't see on film, but there was a little hitch. They gave him a microphone. And then when he got up to sing, there was a microphone on the mic stand. So didn't know which one to use. Figured it out. Made it look like, like a smooth move. And then crushed uh, White Lightning. Um, which was which was super cool. Um, after that was Lori Morgan, um, Uncle Cracker, Tracy Lawrence, Jamie Johnson, and Winona Judd. Then Travis Tritt again. Then Dirks Bentley, um, and then a very cool moment. You, Joe Nichols, sang a few old country boys, and uh, actually Tra- Randy Travis um, came out on stage with you. Yeah, it was that was that was that special, up. man. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I've met Randy a handful of times with you um he and his wife but to get to literally be on stage with him and you know joe and i are singing his song that he did with george jones i mean it was it was neat and so yeah and i know there's more to uh list uh so we'll get back to that but this is going to air on I think PBS, if I'm not mistaken, at at, at yep. some point. But you can catch maybe most or all of these uh, performances on YouTube. Like I've I've seen like both of mine. I've watched some of the others. Uh, so you can go. It's called Still Playing Possum. So you can type in an artist and that, and or you can. I mean, you guys know how to find it. it it's pretty easy yeah and then then they did an intermission um and then uh, when they came back out um dirk's band as they have the 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 alter ego the hot country knights came out and did a high tech red oh i missed that stage on yeah we were we were at the bus making drinks uh dirk's came out on a john deere tractor and rode it to the stage oh man i missed that Uh, yep and then tracy bird again um and then say one of one of my favorites because it's just one of my favorite songs of all times was Sarah Evans and Tracy oh, yeah. Lawrence doing we I saw was country that. country yeah. wasn't cool. Oh man, that was good. And then um a legend who we got to spend some time with backstage at eighty eight years old is still a handful. 
Um, the original soul man himself, Sam Moore from Sam and oh, Dave. Gosh. He's a soul man. He's a character. Uh, now. So he came out. Yeah. Uh, so he came out and did the blues man. Janie Fricky, who she's still a fireball too. Uncle Cracker, Tracy Lawrence, Gretchen Wilson, who you sat between Gretchen and her husband or, or boyfriend. No, or, it was, or, I was right between uh, Gretchen and Lori and Morgan. Lori Morgan. And them two are going. I mean, it was it was a trip. It was funny. Yeah. And then one, and, and uh, while we're talking about the pre-show, you were sitting there for the first part of the show before you went on. Um, you had a really cool conversation, yeah. um, be it somewhat. Yeah, so I see this note. like – Really well dressed. Um, you can tell, like classy. You know, lady, start walking toward me, who's, you know, I'm thinking, is probably seventy or whatever. And she sits down. And she goes, "Are you Justin?" I said, "Yes, ma'am." And she goes, "Well, I'm Mrs. Charlie Daniels," and I'm like. Oh my gosh! And I I knew I should know her walking up to me, and then it hit me. I go, yeah, that's right. Okay, that's how I that's how I know you, you know. And but but she and I had never met, and you guys who have listened to this podcast uh, know mine and Jr's affinity for Charlie Daniels. I mean, he was our I mean, he's the number one guy that we look up to in this business that we've met, right? I mean, I would think. Oh yeah. Uh, at least for me, and um, and so yeah, we had a great conversation, and but it was it was such an honor for her to come up and introduce herself to me, and you know, I had the opportunity to express to her how much he meant to me, and you know, I didn't know if she knew like he and I had kind of become close over the last, I don't know, five years of his life or six or whatever it was. And, but it was, it was, it was really special and it was really moving, uh, to be honest with you. Uh, it was, um, and it, and it again kind of reminded me like, golly, man, he was the things that she was saying, you know, uh, in reaction to what I was saying and then other things she was sharing with me, which I won't share here um, because it was a little more private than that. Um, it was just, it was neat. It was, it was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 and, I, and then when, when you, when I finally got a chance to talk to you side stage and I was like, who was, the you were kind of like me. You were like, I know I ought to know her, but I know, I know yeah. She, and then you were like, that's Miss Charlie. I was like, Miss Hazel. That's exactly yeah. who that yeah. is. Cause I've seen her at the Opry before, but never was close, you know, that close. And it was dark in there. They had the neon blue lights on and smoky yeah. and stuff. So I, I could tell it was like you said, it was really nice hair done, well dressed, put you know put together lady and i was thinking who is that and then when you said that i was like oh you were telling me the stuff and i'm just like oh my yeah. gosh i don't know if i'm i mean it, right it, now, it, but. it it didn't surprise me i mean like i mean i don't want to be disrespectful but like she's a pretty lady and you know yeah. like oh, yeah. you're like and she was really well dressed and and you're like of course that's charlie's wife like you know right. what i mean like, like right because he always looks sharp tucked in buckled, right. hat Right. You're like, of course, that's his wife. Like, you know, right. well, same with same with Nancy yeah, Jones. Exactly. I yeah. mean, still put together. I Absolutely. mean, just looks like a a, a star, you know. But uh, but yeah, that was that was really cool um, interaction. And I know um, I know you haven't washed the, washed your jeans yet, where uh, Lori Morgan touched your leg. So <laughs> we're going we're going to not put those in the wash. Yeah, no, I'm a, I'm uh, a, uh, I may put those in a shadow box. Um, yeah right yeah, Lori, so, Lori morgan touched my leg here well it was funny because <laughs> Lori, so before the sh so again it was filmed for tv so there's a there's a thing called camera blocking i guess is that what it's called uh yeah. where they strategically put people in certain seats at like award shows these type of events who I guess whoever they want to be seen on camera together, or whatever. And uh, usually I'm not this guy. <laughs> I'm usually the one that 
they're going. Yeah, go back to about the fifteenth row, Justin. Uh, but this one, they wanted me on the front row, and they go, "We want you in between um, Lori and uh, Gretchen." And I'm going, "Okay, you got me." Twist of my arm, all right? You know, yeah, right. Kind of deal. Uh, so I go and sit down, and at first it's just Lori and I. Um, and she like grabs me on the leg and she goes, I mean, not, it was not inappropriate at all. I don't mean, I hope, I don't mean it to come across that way. She just like, was like patting me. She goes, Hey, and she and I had not met. She goes, do I still have lipstick on? (laughs) And I go, uh, yeah, I go, you got more on the bottom than the top i don't know if that matters i go do i still have lipstick on she goes oh yeah you look good whatever um and then <laughs> you're like yes Lori morgan yeah, and then um and then gretchen comes out and they she sits on the other side of me and she's like she and i were talking and i don't think she and i had met actually before that maybe we had but but i was a huge fan of of both of those um oh yeah women as as artists and um uh it was cool to kind of get to know them a little a little bit because uh, again i had not met either of them and have looked up to both of them for a while and and so oh yeah we, there and was some funny still sing great i don't know we sat there for 30 40 minutes together during the beginning of the show and or the first part of the show and there was some pretty funny banter, uh, to say the, to oh, say the least. It was, it was funny. <laughs> but so, uh, so then Tracy um, the, did the one. I, Tracy Lawrence did the one I loved back then. Then Gretchen did. I'll always get lucky with you. Tanya Tucker did the Grand Tour. Uh, then you had Charlie Starr from Blackberry Smoke and Jamie Johnson both. That uh, was great. Team up on yes, yesterday's wine. Oh, that was yeah. really good. But uh, I mean, both Joe of those guys. Joe were Nichols. Great. Absolutely. Then Joe Nichols came back out and then if the drinking won't kill me, uh, Lisa Matassa sang one. Then T. Graham Brown, who I killed I, it. Been around. T. Absolutely Gra- killed it. Killed it. Killed it. Uh, and he's what? He's got to be the right way. Early 70s. Yeah, probably. Still just. I mean, it. just absolutely crushed it. And like you said, and look, there ain't nobody more talented than Stapleton. There's just, I mean, the dude just sings like an angel. I mean, he does. I mean, he's just, yeah. he's incredible. And he can play. He can and play. All oh, yeah. I wish I could sing like him. There, It'll never happen. But Tennessee whiskey, his version is not Tennessee whiskey. It just ain't. I'm sorry. It's just not. It's just, it just yeah. ain't. Tennessee whiskey is a yeah. George Jones song. Yep, yep. It's just I it, mean, and, you know, and it, it's, it's just weird because now it's not a it's buddies, not like an R and B kind of soul kind of thing. Right. It's just not what that song is, um, right? And I'll probably get hate for this, but I it, well, I but know again, my buddies. He's incredible, and I love him as an artist. I just I don't know. I just learn. I'm like you though. The original version. It's Tennessee whiskey. That yeah, that's the way I learned the song. Thing, yeah, I, I, I yeah don't same know. here. But. And I know my my buddy Mike Diamond, who came to the show with us, we were talking about it uh, just randomly on the way back, and he says, you know, people request that song a lot now, obviously. Um, and he'd say, I can play it, but I'm going to play the right. version I know, the the real version, the right version, the George Jones version. You know what? The, the other it, thing, or, or actually, he he and I both agreed that the way we learned it more even so David more than Allen Jones Coe. for me personally. It was the David yep. Allen Coe version? I was just going to bring that up. Hits, David so Allen did Coe album. did did DAC do that first? I'm actually curious because I want to say DAC might even have written that song, but I could be wrong about that. No, that's a Dean Dillon song. Oh, okay, okay. Well, there's a question though. Don't you think it's legit to see which one of those did it first? Yeah. That'd be interesting to know because I, I can't think off the top of my head, but I know, like I said, the I know David the, Allen Coe version. I know that version too. Was the was the one I probably listened to more than the Jones one originally, 
Um, so, but yeah, that that's that's who did. T. Graham crushed that. But he crushed to meet it. Him. Yeah, that's the point. Crushed it. And please, I get to get, please God, Cochran please God, uh, you Stapleton fans, don't think I'm hating because that is not what I'm. No, that's not no, at all what I'm. Not. I mean, because again, the dude is more talented than anybody in our industry, and and well, he's see, incredible. I think I, I, think I re- and I love his music. I just that particular song, I'm. I don't know. It's just not my thing. Yeah. I remember in 2013 when I first started working for you, the first uh, weekend I worked for you, Stapleton was direct support uh, yeah. opening for you. Yeah. And I, I thought I remember you hear, I hearing you telling him backstage when we were all drinking to say, hey, man, you know, you ought to really take that George Jones Tennessee whiskey and do it a little different. You might have some success with it. I think, I think that was all you anyway. <laughs> I, don't I think, think you, so. I think you started I don't all that. Think. I think I think you said hey, I would I just love, look. I would, I would love and, to take credit for that, but I don't, I don't think right. I can take credit for that one. But. I don't you know, say, hey, but yeah, Timberlake that's what that's what blew him said, up was that uh, Timberlake and him doing that on the uh, some awards show. Yeah, uh, I forget which we already knew how oh, good he was. I, everybody I, in Nashville already, knew. Like, like yeah. why ain't this like this dude is like ridiculous? Yeah, like I remember yep. the first time I heard him ever was like in uh, I don't know nine, ten, eleven. At the, uh, I think it was the ASCAP Awards, which is a songwriter award for those out there listening or watching. I know JR knows that, but, um, and he and his wife, he had an, uh, I think he was playing that Jaguar that he always plays, which is an electric guitar, uh, for those who may not know. And it was him and his wife, and that was it, um, Standing on stage, and they did, um, uh, I think it was Amanda, Amanda, light of my life. And I, I turned to my producer because he's an ASCAP writer, I'm a BMI writer, and so I was just there supporting him. And I go, Who the hell is that? Because he was so amazing, and he goes, Oh, that's Stapleton. He's ridiculous, and I mean, it was an it wasn't it was another ten years or so before, you know, anybody knew of him. And so I'm so happy for his success because nobody's more deserving. And you know, he grew up with Raj. Yeah, they played band. Yeah, the, our lead guitar player, band leader. They grew up in Kentucky, like together, like like grew up, grew up together. <laughs> And so he's like, it's funny, like, hearing him. He's like, we're like, oh, Chris is just, I guess, he's going to move to Nashville, I guess. Okay, whatever. And it's, it, I don't know, it's crazy when you think about it in terms oh, yeah. of that, you know. Yeah, Roger so, said he used to, I think he, I, was he the pizza guy or something? I don't and know, one day he just didn't like show that. up, and they used to all hang out and jam and party yeah, at this house. Like and one that. day he didn't show up, and was like, Where, where's Chris at? Oh, he said he was going to go to Nashville and try to write some songs. <laughs> and, and then there, he, there you rest go. Is yeah. Yeah, crazy, but yeah, the the uh, finish off the list from the Jones event that night. T. Graham killed it. Then Lori Morgan and Jamie Johnson teamed up a one. Then Jelly Roll did a song, and then Brad Paisley closed the show <laughs> out. Um, I know Brad was in and out. Didn't get to catch up with him. Did talk to his dad, Sheriff Doug, for a little <laughs> yeah. bit. And our dear dear friend uh, and podcast listener, uh, tour manager extraordinaire, who actually was George Jones' tour manager in the nineties, uh, Brent Long was there and it was great to get to oh, spend I didn't a know he time was with Brent uh, that night. A TM? Yeah, like 91 wow. to 99 something like that. Did not yep. know that. And uh got to say this too, I had uh I had I've not that's the first time I've seen Jelly Roll uh sing or play or anything and or meet him or anything did get to spend some time with him backstage cuz we all kind of shared a dressing room. He he came out of the bathroom singing Justin songs as soon as he knew you were in there and then rattled <laughs> off a bunch of bunch of album cuts from old albums and we got to chit chat uh, him and one of the guys in his band were there with him and and it was cool to uh, meet him nice guy can't, yeah he's know, a super nice guy hadn't been one of his shows so can't comment on that but sang well and uh couldn't have been a nicer guy um but that was that was really cool that night uh we got to have your buddies basil and roger scott in the house for that they're a hoot Those characters um uh, yep and I was looking through here pictures of you and Joe and Randy, which was super cool. Uh, my buddy Wally uh, was there. Got to got to hang with Wally a little bit. His dad was there. Got to meet big uh, 
Mr. Big Harris there. Uh, my buddy Mike Diamond, who came up, just looking through pictures here. Um, yeah, super cool event. Well, then we got – so then we – after we do leave that, we have a few days off, and then we have to be back in Little Rock for your third annual St. Jude Justin Moore Golf Tournament um, and performance where you do an acoustic show um, the, uh, and a banquet the night before, and then um, we play a golf tournament on that Monday. Uh, banquet was awesome this year. We had it at the hall, the same event where we had the tornado benefit. Um Really cool. Matt Stell came back. George Burge. Um, we had um, uh, several other artists come and help lend their talents to that night. Um, uh, Shane Prophet um, was there again. Um, he's awesome. Um, uh, Randy Hauser was supposed to be there but couldn't make it, unfortunately, uh, due to the passing of a huge influence and friend in the music yeah. community, Mr. Keith Gaddis. Who unfortunately lost his life a few weeks yeah, ago. I wanna say, um, yeah, I wanted to speak on that. Yeah, uh, just a huge loss for. You know, we've talked about on here how um, the country music community is is a really small one, and uh, we all know each other. I mean, for the most part, and if not, know of each other, and. Oh, so and so. Oh, yeah. Uh, he used to play for so and so. Or hey, Keith uh, has played for a ton of artists and a uh, super talented guy. Produced a bunch of artists. I'm sure he's written songs you guys would know. Just a good dude. And I was around him a little bit, not not a ton, but, but certainly was a fan of his playing. Um, and he and Randy are like best buddies. And so, yeah, Randy couldn't make it uh, due to that. But obviously our uh, condolences go out to, to his family. That was just a horrible, horrible, uh, tragic accident, uh, you know, yeah. th that he lost his life uh, during. So, yeah, it was just awful. You know, I only got to, I've only been around Keith a few times over the years. I remember <laughs> um when I was John Party's tour manager, I met Keith the first time. He came and actually got up and played in a little event thing we did for the record label in Nashville, and um, he was just cool as they could get, and, man, could he play. Uh, but he actually showed – that was the night John learned about the B-Bender set up in his Telecaster. Oh, so, wow. Um, after that, after that, we sent Telly off to get work. Yeah, he was a, a he was a Telly on. playing, country playing Ooh, yeah. guitar yeah. player. I mean, it was not like the – I don't know the rock kind of the i mean he was a country yeah. player man telly picker yep. yeah country picker for sure yeah i remember that night i kind of reminded John me a little bit guys. he always reminded me a little bit of pete anderson a yep. little bit yep. i don't know yep. why but yep. he, he kind of always had that vibe to me yeah pete anderson's dwight yoakam's longtime guitar player and producer um, but yeah, I remember that, that time I met him, I, John and the guys were kind of in the alleyway there kind of warming up. And I told Keith, Hey, the guys around here warming up. If you want to jump in with them, he's like, no, nah, I'm good. A little, I didn't realize he was the level he was, you know, then I was like, Oh shit, this guy don't need to warm up nothing. Right. Uh, you know, so, but now nah, yeah, I'm good. That was, um, yeah, now nah, I'm good. But that was, that was unfortunate. We hate, we didn't get to see Randy, but, uh, we'll know he'll be back. But the, uh, the golf tournament, another successful year, 450,000 this year, which puts us to a grand total of 1.2 million raised yeah, for St. Jude in three, three years. years. That's just, uh, it's so, amazing. Yeah, the um, and the stuff amazing. they do is just incredible. It's, uh, yeah. I don't, I don't know is. what else to say. I mean, that, that number kind of speaks for itself. I think, I don't remember because I'm not good at math what we did the the first year, but last year we went over four hundred thousand, and we're talking in two days. Um, and then this year four fifty, um, and it was three something the first so, year. Yeah, to be at <coughs> excuse me one point two million in in three years is just it's amazing. I mean, it really is, and. I, you know, I, I say this every year, and I sound like a broken record, but it's it's true. Um, and this would be true of many, many, many communities out there, probably your community if you're listening. Um, but the, the support that the people here uh, show up and show, 
uh, and show out um, is is just it's crazy. I mean, you know, I think this the next year we do this um, in twenty four. The, I bet the teams for the golf tournament will be sold out next week. I mean, it's just – it's yep. crazy. I And I, I'm so appreciative of that, um, you know, and, and, and a ton of credit. Almost all of the credit goes to St. Jude because the people on the board, uh, even who are – you know, the, like the people on the board, <clears throat> including my cousin Kristen and – uh, Brad Rickett, our buddy, um, who was the president this year, like they're local and they work all year from now. Like that just finished up a week ago or just over a week ago. Um, they're working right now for next year. I don't do anything but show up, play some songs, and then play golf the next day. You know what I mean? So, like, they're the ones who deserve all the credit. Um, you know, I lend my name to it, and I I don't know why that helps, but uh, it seems to a little bit. And but it 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 blows my mind. I mean, if you'd have told me when I was, you know, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen years old, hey, you know, there's a great cause over here. You can go and play four or five songs or whatever and then play golf the next day if you lend your name to this. And all of these people are going to bust their ass all year and we'll raise almost a half a million dollars for this said charity. I mean, I would have thought you were nuts, <laughs> you know, yep. and so it's awesome. it's a, it really is amazing. Job. I mean, it, it really, really is. Yeah, they do a great job. Um, so after we left the golf tournament, we went to Nashville and did a couple of days of press. Yay. Got to see, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, got to start off with old boy Bobby Bobby Bones and his Porsche, uh, and then uh, had had did a he cool really have a Porsche? Day. Oh yeah, shut up. Oh yeah, I got the picture of it. Oh, really? Yeah. Right, parked out in his little Bobby Bones oh, spot. Oh yeah. God. Yeah. I wish I'd have known that. Yeah, I'd have gave him some crap about that. That ain't right. Arkansas right um, there. Hell, I drive an F two fifty. That's what I was hoping yeah. he would have had. But come on, Bobby. We'll but hey, he's I'm Nashville. Give him, he's Nashville. I'm gonna have to now. give him some crap about that. Right. Uh, but then, then the day the day was all, the day the one of the highlights of the day for me was as always we got to see. Uh, we got to go to Crook and Chase and see uh, Lori Charlie Ann. Chase and or. Lori Ann and I mean they're just Nashville treasures country music treasures however you want to put it uh but it's always good to see them Big D and Bubba uh all the fun stuff got to take a quick little walk through Nashville downtown with Cody that day and boy mind-blowing uh Nash Vegas they've been saying it for years it's officially Nash Vegas now I mean, that it's, is a it's insane, what a shit show man. Nashville has become um, and for all you uh, I, I mentioned on the radio show today uh, we were talking to somebody that I had to be in Nashville and how I was like so glad to leave it. And they're like, well, that's an unpopular opinion probably, huh? I go, yeah, it probably is. But um, those people are not in the music business and um, yeah. and didn't live there when it was cool. Now it ain't cool right. uh, to me. Right. So, all you right. guys out there who love it, hey, more power to you. It just ain't. It yeah, it's ain't just too much. It ain't what it used to be. Now it's a. No. It's you might. There's no difference in going to L.A., New York City, Vegas, or Nashville, and that's what used to yep. be cool about Nashville is it was different. Now it ain't. Yep. The buildings, the buildings look different. The town was different. The vibe was different. And so hey, I'm glad all my buddies that have bars down there are raking the money in like crazy. But it, it, it's just not cool. It's like a tourist trap now. It used to be mm -hmm. cool. Now it's not cool. Yep. I, I don't know. Yep. That's just my opinion. I'm, I may be alone in that, but yeah, it's just too too much. Ten pounds of shit and five pounds sack. Uh, but while we were there, we were, the main reason we were there is we did a show 
and it was live stream. So thanks to everybody who, who watched uh, the live stream uh, from the Wild Horse, the album release party for the new album Stray Dog that came out Cinco de Mayo, uh, May 5th. Um, we did a show for it the night before and did a live stream. I know that's where a lot of people got, uh, were sending comments on that, uh, watching the show. I've got some pictures here. It was incredible. Had, um, had some of your duet partners from the album show up, had Riley Green show up and do the song with you off the album. Yeah. Also had Priscilla Block show up and do, uh, you, me and whiskey who, uh, I looked today, climbed six spots last week. It's now the number 16 yeah. song in the country, uh, moving fast. Um, so she was there to help, uh, to sing that one. So it was just a great night and the live stream looked great. Shout out to everybody at the wild horse. Hate to see the wild horse going away. Cause that was one of the last of the big original Nashville nightclubs that'll be going away soon. Uh, but it was a great experience. That's exactly there what we're talking about. Like why, why yeah. man, come on. Yeah. So, uh, but then we left there, uh, day of, uh, the the album released the fifth we left to go to sacramento to play country in the park uh which had a great time out there with with uh, chris young and, and maddie and tate and breland and all those guys and gals um and then we flew home yesterday or two days ago and um now we're recording this podcast uh here uh actually all transparency it's tuesday may 9th as we record this um, yeah so we got i got I home about i don't know five o'clock uh sunday kind of had a just an early night because um, we were all tired because Kate had taken Ella to a tournament, a softball tournament in uh, Louisiana uh, Saturday and Sunday and got home not too much earlier than me. And then yesterday, Monday, um, we were all trying to just rest up because the kids are out of school on Monday um but last night man right back to the ball field i had to coach ball ball game and we beat a team seven to four that we should have that we beat the first time like 13 to two so we did not play it, it was like everybody was exhausted like we didn't play that well um but but we won um and uh tonight get to go can't or Klein's got two games, and then I get to go along with my wife here in about, I don't know, three hours and work the concession stand. So, like, all those people out there who think that we're not, like, real people, my kids are on four different teams, and your team has concession stand duty, uh, you know, a couple of times a, a season, and – like, we jump in there just like anybody else and pull. So I'll be cooking burgers and Kate will be selling hot dogs and nachos. And um, so, yeah, it just, just no rest for the weary. It never stops. So. Yeah, no kidding. Um, I was looking here. Sacramento, I want to give a shout out real quick to uh, Red's Pizza in Rockland, California. Red's Is that Pizza where the wings came from? Pizza. Yes. Great. Good. Yes. If you're in the uh, Sacramento area, uh, Rockland, California area, Red's Pizza, I want to give them a shout out. It was great pizza and absolutely fantastic wings. Yeah. Um, I didn't eat the pizza, but the wings were awesome. Yeah, they were great. Yeah. But that's where we've been. Uh, and now we'll let you guys know where we're going and we'll wrap this up. I've got a, uh, I'll go through a couple of quick uh, comments. Um, um, next week and questions uh, or next month when we when we record our next episode I'll, I'll make sure to try to compile some of these but um today's episode is sponsored by bobcat if you're like me you don't like to sit still for very long you look out the window and see possibilities what if i planted a row of trees over there it'd be nice to clear that trail in those woods that's why bobcat equipment is so great it's compact size, powerful performance, and big-time versatility will keep up with all your ideas for your property. With a few attachments or implements and a Bobcat tractor, for example, you can do big things in small amounts of time. It's perfect for me when I have a break from touring or recording. Take a look at tractors, utility vehicles, mowers, and more at Bobcat.com or pay a visit to your local dealer. 
Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas. It's central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, Again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So... Uh, You can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer, all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggyar, and Instagram, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggyar, but check us out. It's called This Little Piggy, and uh, see what we got to offer, shopthislittlepiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour a jigger and take this a second ride with us. Hey, gang. As y'all have heard, the Justin Moore Podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait and Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great, inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Uh, I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait, you want to look like JM, or you want to look like me, you can get you some Wranglers and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live cowboys and plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. I was just looking through here. Zach Briscoe sent a message. J.R. Justin's new album is amazing, especially Better Slow. And I know that's one Man, I've, that's I've a, seen that's several a, Yeah, people. that's a, it's funny that people have – you know, it's always weird. So we have a new album out. I don't, I, you probably mentioned it. I, I don't know. But uh, it's called Stray Dog. That's why we've been so busy for uh, really a lot of the reason, uh, preparing for that and the release of it and um, – it's always weird when you put an album out. You think like this song and this song are going to be the ones, and then there's always a song that you don't think about or expect that people gravitate towards. And I've had like three or four of my good friends who, you know, they're honest with me. They they won't say, "Hey, this sucks," but they'll go dude this is the song or this you know this is the song or the, yeah. you know whatever and i've had three or four of them that have that's the song for them and i'm like really like i like i mean i like it i i do but i it, th- that would not have been the one that i would have thought uh would have generated so much attention so that's funny that you mentioned that song yeah, and um, sorry, I didn't mean to throw you off there. I just no, you're it, good. It, it that's weird because I've gotten that from a bunch of people. Yeah, and then here Trevor Houston said um, this should be a single, one hundred percent country on it. Agreed. Thank you. Let me take this off. George Jones keeps trying to play here. Let him go. Yeah, that's what I was listening to before we before we started. Um Get Rich or Drunk Trying is Jeremy Whitfield's new song on the album. Yeah, we've been playing that live for a while. Um uh, Hey JR, Chris Jackson here. Uh don't know. Question for the podcast. Did y'all know TL recorded Mo and Joe's Good Old Boys with drum roll? 
Joe, of course, Tim McGraw, and John Anderson. Why is that? I I did not know. Trying to play, but he said uh, J M and T L show need to do that one live. Tell J M. This is the germ that talked him into crawfish and cold beer. My kind of woman, LOL. <laughs> Thanks for the great podcast and music. Long-winded, sorry. No, all good. He must have uh, heard Chris our Jackson. germ talk. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is from um, Ryan Penrose. Having podcast withdrawals. Hope your Zoom machine isn't broke. Got my wife tickets to see y'all. The new venue in Missouri, Cedar Lake Cellars in August. I'm using the text number to keep checking for meet and greets. I'd love to meet both of y'all. Stray Dogs is fire. Got the CD pre-ordered old school. God bless, Ryan Penrose. Well, thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad you like the album, yeah. man. I appreciate that. Um, but, yeah, so make sure to keep sending those questions and comments. We appreciate every time you do. Um, and, and we'll try to keep uh, – try to – get to as many of them as we can like i said use the text line 501 200 40 50 um and i'll make sure to start um looking through that as well i actually have the have the access to it but need to figure out how to dive in there more which i'll get cody to help me on that um but we're saying coming up um this week uh we're actually leaving tomorrow but hopefully this will air by the time uh, we get to Texas, but we've got shows this weekend in Texas. We've got one in the Grand Prairie, Texas, uh, it's in the Dallas area uh, for a radio show there. Um, I know it's Priscilla, uh, Eli Young Band's with us. Uh, the infamous Chris Cagle will be there. <laughs> um, so that should be a hoot. Uh, and then the next night, the 13th, I hope I'm not getting in trouble for saying this, but um, we're going to be at the uh, Country I Heart uh, festival in austin again no, i already and talked I just about found, it on radio i got you yep. and then i just found um my laminate from last time we were there which was may 2nd 2015 okay uh, my guess was so, gonna be like 14 so okay yep so that so we'll be back there on the 13th um they'll be recording that i'm sure it'll be out where you can watch that at some point um then we've got uh the next weekend off because uh, kids are getting out of school. I'm sure, y'all are excited about all that. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're we're trying to. I was going. I haven't talked to you, but we're trying to get down to the beach for that week. Um, but all the kids are out of school, with the exception of Ella. So my daughter, my oldest daughter, who's in seventh grade, the rest of them are in elementary school. They'll be out of school. <clears throat> So, um, tell me this ain't some crap. And maybe this is normal. I, I don't know. It's my my first time having a daughter, and that's junior high for our school. I guess it would be middle school maybe for some. But um, So, she has the best grades, or if not the best, she's top two or three in her class. I think she's got the best, but I don't want to say that and be wrong. Um, you can miss per semester you can miss three days <clears throat> she's missed four because we went skiing uh, I think it was a, like a Christmas gift we went skiing so she's missed four one too many days right okay so she's got A's in every class she's never made a B in her life um and I'll be curious to know you guys who are watching and listening, your thoughts. I, I don't know. And maybe this is normal. If it is, so be it. But it's still frustrating. So we're going to try to go down to the beach. Well, Ella's <coughs> like, Dad, I can't. I've got to take semester tests. So the way it works is you have nine weeks test and semester test. And usually it's dependent upon grades. Like if you have good enough grades – you don't have to take semester tests, right? Okay. And I understand there needing to be a uh, uh, a rule as far as absences and all that too. But we're talking about one day. One day because she was spending time with her family. So she's got to stay all week. I think she's one of like two or three kids. Has to stay all week and take semester tests 
in each of the classes that she has an A in. And it counts for, drum roll, 30% of her grade. Wow. So she's went through the entire year. She's made an A. She's got the highest grade in the class. And it comes down to, because she had one day missed too many, this is going to account for 30% of her grade. And wow. it's also going to take away from us having the opportunity as a family to go on a vacation. Like, is right. that is is there something wrong with that, or am I crazy? That seems a little much. It seems I mean, a in little college, ridiculous I know you can, to me. Now, yeah, if that's college, the rule, you can take the a rule, test, whatever, the whole, we'll abide by yeah. them, obviously. But it seems a little effing ridiculous to to me. I mean, right. like, so we're going to miss out on a family vacation, which we all need. Um, she's got the highest grade in the class. She's proven it all freaking year. Um, she's won scholastic things. She's the beta state beta this or that or whatever. I don't even know what she is. Secretary or vice president or whatever the hell she ran for. She won that. Like, and this is not to brag on her. This is just, it seems a little silly to me. Like at 30%, 30%. So say she has a bad yeah. day. It's going to take her from an A to a C because she missed yeah. one day. She, one day too many. She's in eighth Seventh. grade. Seven is that well, not this, a little her, silly? Her cumul- that is ridiculous. But her accumulative GPA to go to college this won't no, it don't that. start until like the ninth or tenth grade or whatever. Right. But so but, hell, I just miss well, it as but, long as you pass. But the thing is, she's telling me, and I don't know if this is true or not. I gotta, I gotta check. She's like, Dad, if I don't, t- if I'm not there and I don't take it, they'll fail me in the class. And I'm like, this seems a little crazy. <laughs> like, am I nuts? I mean, am I being yeah. like a crazy well, it, dad here, or is that, or does that seem say, a little like excessive? No, that definitely sounds crazy. And I would say if it's thirty percent of the grade, then no matter if you show up or not, you just lose that thirty percent. Yeah, but you know Ella. She's like, Dad, I can't. You know, I, if I lose that, it's but I don't know. It just seems. I mean, ridiculous you know what I'm saying, though. Me. It really, in the grand no, scheme, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter if it doesn't affect her long no, term. No, long term, it don't matter. But I don't know. It just. I know, but that is that's a that seems like a lot to stay for an extra week for, for missing one a day. day. I mean, I don't know the rules now, but I and know she's going to be there with like, like one other kid, and I'm like, so you're right. gonna. I mean, I don't know if that's yeah, the that rule. It's the rule, but. I don't know if that's a state thing or our school thing or like, I don't know, but I'm like, cause I said, well, maybe you can take them this week. Cause they're not, they're done. I mean, they're none of them are doing anything now. You know how it gets yeah. the last week or two of school. They're not doing anything. She's like, Nope. You know her though. She's a rule follower and I'm a rule breaker. Yeah. She's like, I said, can you maybe take them this week or can you take them all one day next? Like take them all Tuesday. And we'll go, she's like, no, Dad, I can't. And I'm like, well, that's, I'll text the superintendent and be like, hey. Can, well, yeah, I would, you just, know. I would just say find out for sure what the parameters are I mean, for sure. But is that not a little, like, excessive? No, that's a, yeah. I mean, I was a little over I the top, but, like, I don't know, yeah. whatever. I mean, it'd be one thing if she was struggling. But I'd be curious to know, like, you guys out there, is this, like, something that y'all deal with dealt with is this normal is it sound a little nutty or i don't know i'm just it sounds crazy to yeah, me but i mean i don't yeah well hopefully y'all get hopefully y'all get something figured out Yeah, because i it would be nice to go to, down to our house because we just got it fixed you know because it was the flood yeah. and the, the whole thing and I don't know. Yeah. But well, I want to give a shout out to everybody graduating no matter what class or what uh school or what level um they're graduating. I know this month's a lot of graduations for school, so congratulations to everybody uh for getting through that part of your life. Um I know uh, a a friend from that I graduated with sent me a picture this morning uh that we had the biggest class that Elmore County High School has ever had at 141. Wow. 
And that's, I mean, that's big, big but it's not that big. <laughs> you know what no. I mean? I mean, but that'd be like Poen having 100 oh, people yeah, graduate. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I graduated with like 70-something people, so it's basically double right. from 1998 when I graduated. Um, but, yeah, shout out to everybody out there graduating something. Good you know job. Who's, Way to see you it know who's graduating uh, Friday, right? Who? Southie. Oh, yeah. I'm, this Friday. Breaks my heart. That's right. You're going to stay and do that? Oh, yeah. So well, it's only going to get South, worse. Southman's graduating uh, uh, kindergarten. He's going to have his T-Rex haircut. Yeah. Um, so that'll be that weekend. Then the next week, we go out. To, we gonna, we're going to fly to Phoenix. We got a show in Winter Haven, California, which is right on the uh, the uh, Arizona California state line. Um, and then we're going to play a show in Scottsdale, Arizona, on Friday the twenty sixth. Um, get a day off. Then we're going to be at Pom- in Pomona, California, on uh, the twenty eighth, playing the uh, L.A. County State Fair. Uh, and then we'll come back home for a few days. Then we've got a big show. Um, Gulf Coast Jam, Panama City, Florida, June second. Looking forward to that show. Been a few years since we've yeah, done that one. Um, that should be fun. We got some friends and family going to be in the area for that. Uh, I'm going to be slammed. So if anybody wants to hang out with me, it's probably going to be a bad time for me. Um, the more friends and family we have, the more work I have to do. So the less time I have to spend with anyone I would like to. So just know that. Uh, I know it's close to home, but that don't really help me most of the time. So know that then the next week same case we've got atmore alabama on the 10th of june um the wind creek casino show um done it several years ago it's gonna be outside this year really cool uh, nice casino they have there so looking forward to doing that but again same thing uh i'm gonna be busy so it's not like i can hang out and do stuff but would like for everybody to come to the show if they can um then we're gonna go up to new york city our favorite yay uh uh, do uh fox do fox and friends which is cool we do like doing that but boy it's early um and then we're gonna do a show in mason city iowa on the 17th uh sarnia ontario canada on the 22nd jackson michigan on the 23rd mount gilead ohio on the 24th uh and then we'll the last weekend of june going into july we will start uh, our uh annual two-day show run in dewey beach delaware then mashnatucket connecticut uh then july 3rd which is uh, weird for us to be doing a show so close to independence day but this year we will be playing in quarryville pennsylvania uh, with our good buddy granger smith um who will be it was doing his I guess farewell that'll be the last show we ever tour. get to play with him Maybe so. So y'all make sure to come to that. I know I talked to the promoter a few days ago, and they've already sold out the original 6,000 tickets that were available for this show, and they're going to open up a couple thousand more. Um, so if you uh, in that area, you can come to that show. Um, and then New Salem, North Dakota on July 7th, um, and that will lead you up to the next few weeks. Uh, then after that, we've got Green Bay, Wisconsin, Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin, Louisville, Kentucky, Petersburg, Illinois, and Paris, Illinois in July. Um, so y'all make sure you go to justinmoremusic.com. You can see all these tour dates, how to get tickets, all that fun stuff. Uh, again, text the text line 501 200 for meet and greet information uh, or anything like that you may need. But that's our schedule, what we've got coming up. And uh, we're going to get, when we get off here in a few minutes, we're going to um, go ahead and lock down a date that we're going to record our next episode and start thinking about guests. I know we've got a few we've talked to, um, but we'll start getting those lined out um, for the next few episodes we've got coming out this season. Um, so besides that, I would say um, definitely check the website. I don't know if the merch, the new merch is up, but I know at the Wild Horse show, I saw the new merch Jonathan had made, and it looked killer, a bunch of cool new shirts and hats. Yeah, I still hadn't seen it, stuff, so. so. Yeah, they look great. So y'all check that out. I know some we've partnered with Bobcat to put out a few special um, shirts that'll only be available this this tour. Uh, so y'all can check those out. Uh, again, remember to use the like, rate, subscribe buttons anywhere you listen or watch this podcast. Uh, at Jr. The Handler, at Justin Colmore on Instagram and Twitter. Um, the Justin Moore Podcast instagram page is alive and well so you can go friend us over there and get updates and pictures and stuff when we post it on there um, but I want to say thanks for everybody for for sticking with us and tuning in um for this now three-year run five season uh podcast journey we've been on many have many have tried many have failed uh, many have succeeded 
uh, we're we're right there in the middle. Us old stray dogs, you know, we just kind of trickle around with the best. We're gonna keep this thing going and keep it rocking, get it back up top the charts. Uh, we couldn't do it without your help, so y'all make sure to use all those buttons and clicks and all that fun stuff because again we don't know how the algorithm worked but somehow it does like, help rate uh, subscribe notification uh, yeah uh, something like that do all the text line, do all, all the crap they stuff. let you do please in yeah, a positive just click way everywhere. Just, <laughs> yeah. yeah click it up click it up and uh use the hashtag justin more podcast to send us questions comments uh, anything like that you want to do for the show i know we um we've had different things over the over the years we've done with the mount rushmore and the um uh, stump the handler and different kind of stuff like that so we'll, we'll make sure to incorporate some of those back into the show as we go on the next few months um come see us at a live show somewhere if we're in your area if you want to take a trip um uh, Get you a ticket and come on see us. It's uh, it's been a fun time out on the road so far this year, and uh, only only bigger and better things to come. So uh, we look forward to seeing all that on the road. Uh, tune in here to each time we put an episode out. Use those buttons, the notification. That way you'll know when it drops each month. And um, that's about all I got for this week, Just. I'm gonna read. Um, I'm gonna read a passage out of my Charlie Daniels. Uh, let's all make the day count book this this week, and I'm gonna um, I'm gonna um, dedicate this one, I guess you'd say, um, to another great man and Christian that we lost um, over the past few months, uh, Dr. Charles Stanley. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure if you go back and listen to the Rhett Aikens episode, because Rhett and I actually text about this. Um, Rhett and I talked about how, you know, we, we still watch it, and I, I, st I still do now. And you can go watch his stuff through his ministries on uh, YouTube and their webpage. Um, so y'all do that. But uh, uh, he was a good one, Dr. Charles Stanley. Y'all look him up if you don't know who I'm talking about. It was from uh, uh, a church in Georgia um, that just had, had great words every week. So y'all uh, y'all make sure to check that out. Um, but I'll dedicate my my um, my – section of the book this week to him and his legacy hey while i'm thinking about rhett just you'll appreciate this i don't know if we how much of this we can play but rhett texted me yesterday just randomly and said found these from 2004 let me see if you can hear this deer heads over my bed one more Deer heads over my bed. <laughs> and then this one. Ever loving country ass. <laughs> oh my gosh. And outlaw women. Did you send that tonight? Women. <laughs> not yet i just got it all i need to send it to him isn't that great that is so cool oh man but anyway so yeah y'all deer uh, heads over my bed deer heads over my bed oh so y'all if y'all want to know what we're talking about there you can go back and listen to the red akins episode of this podcast we did a couple of seasons ago <laughs> yeah. but uh yeah, funny stuff. But thank y'all for tuning in this week to this uh, this month's episode, and uh, we thank y'all uh, for coming seeing us on the road, supporting live country music and Justin's music and artistic creations. And uh, go check out the new album, Stray Dog. Uh, go now, killer new songs stream on there. it. Yeah, bye. And you can go once you're done watch once you're done watching this on YouTube. You can go and uh, there's several cool videos that Cody's put together for some of the songs that are out, not just the single. So y'all go watch those and check them out and tell us which one's your favorite. Um, but until next time, and tell us how I'm much JR you the bench. Handler. Yeah, how much you bench? <laughs> yeah, speaking of, we last we talked, Mike Amos got inducted to the uh, Troy uh, Troy Sports oh, Hall of awesome. Fame. Yeah, I had a big yeah. banquet at the basketball yeah, so arena. Tell, yeah, tell, it, really tell cool. us uh, – this is an insider joke, by the way, for all you listening. Maybe we'll tell you the story about this next time. and I don't know. Maybe we can show a clip yeah. or something, Cody. But, um, but yeah, tell us which one's your favorite and tell us how much you bench. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. Well, thank you all for supporting live country music. We appreciate you all. Uh, and you all tune back in next week. We'll be right back here on the Justin Moore Podcast. Thanks, guys. This episode was brought to you by Bobcat. Check them out at bobcat.com. 
For any of you first-time listeners out there, at the end of each of our episodes, uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, The book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 60, take a look. Hear this, O Job, stop to consider the wondrous works of God. Job 37, 14. There is an old saying about stopping to smell the roses along the way. In our busy lives, in our pursuit of success, we pass by beauty every day without taking the time to appreciate it. I'm as guilty as anyone. I have been blessed with going to some of the most beautiful places on earth, but often during my travels, I've been so intent on the task at hand that I did not always take the time to really enjoy the beauty surrounding me. I can remember a few years ago when the band was crossing the Canadian border late at night. We stopped in an isolated area of Montana to let the other vehicles catch up. I got off the bus, and there above me was a sky full of stars, so pristine, so beautiful, it almost took my breath away. I hadn't seen such a sight since I was a boy, before the skies above the eastern seaboard had gotten so clogged with industrial smoke and jet trails. It was beautiful. Such a nostalgic and wondrous sight. The older I get, the more I appreciate the song of the mockingbird and the whippoorwill, the patchwork beauty of a grove of hardwood trees in autumn, the smell of lilac blossoms in the early spring, and watching a new calf run and frolic in the joy of just being alive. We are surrounded by the beauty of God's creation. Slow down to take it in. Let's all make the day count.